Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. I hope everyone's had a good week. This video looks at a few bits of news as well as some bikes that I took photos of while I was in the UK. Most of which are from bicycles and bikes ridden a long time ago, but that show some of the same innovations that are still being shown today. They also come from a time when there was very much a blend between what was considered a bicycle and a motorcycle. That's the area that I find the most interesting between the low powered e-bike and the heavier weight of a motorcycle, the light electric vehicle. Start off with the cotton mount and there's going to be a huge amount of flexibility in terms of what you can do with this bike. The modification shown here uses something called an ATS drive and this puts a compact gearbox onto the crankshaft which when activated effectively doubles its output. This will allow the rider to keep putting in human effort into riding even when the speeds increase. Anyone familiar with e-bikes will probably know what ghost pedaling is. For those that don't, it's what happens when the speed of your crank is faster than you can move your legs. The comfortable human cadence for most is 80 to 100. Beyond that, you're getting into sprinting territory and most people just want to ride and get exercise. So when this is activated, it will maintain the exercise value of the vehicle at much higher speeds look forward to hearing much more when this bike is completed I should say at this point as well if you would leave me a like for the video really appreciate that it very much helps to spread the word and the content of what we do here next thing to look at is a new motor from a company called star union they supply everything from throttles to apparently now motors this one is a bit unique, at least to the e-bike side of things, in that it's a magnetic geared mid-drive motor. I don't think this has been tried like a magnetic drive for a mid-drive before, but people can, of course, correct me in the comments. Let's look at this video clip and we can see what Star Union says the motor can do. So, it's not zero friction as the video claims because there's still gonna be wear and tear to certain things like bearings but I can see why they would make that claim. The movement of gears together creates noise, so the absence of that means that it probably is quieter. And you won't need to grease gears, so there's less to maintain. Now, nothing's unbreakable, but you can't really strip a gear if you overload the motor, because they're not physically in contact. The magnetic ring is just gonna slip past the other magnetic ring. I'm most interested in how this feels to ride how it delivers the power when you're pedaling and when does it feel natural or are you always aware that it's an e-bike the video here shows that it's being built into a branded bike so are they just interested in selling a complete bike or would they consider selling motors as well the bottom bracket mounts might be proprietary and i have heard that the battery might be locked to the motor like with the bafang m625 which is never really my preference it would be fun to try one though I'm interested in how much it costs and definitely what their plans are for the future with it. Maybe they'll send me one to play with. Uh, the last part of this video is going to show you some stuff from the motor museum that I went to in the UK when I was visiting. I've been there ever since childhood and that's the National Transport Museum. It's a place of pretty much unequal wonders for anyone who's interested in wheeled transport. It actually has on site two of the fastest cars ever made this is my eldest in front of the thrust ssc or supersonic car and although this is currently still the fastest it, it's not my favorite my affection goes to the thrust 2 car which in 1987 took back the world land speed record from the united states the supersonic version it's more a plane without wings the record currently stands at 1,227 kilometers an hour or 763 miles per hour. It took two Rolls-Royce jet engines to do this. You can actually see the damage to the paintwork as a result of the heat. There is another car in development called the Bloodhound, which is being aimed to be a 1,000 miles per hour car. This is the actual vehicle, although the engine, which is a loaner from the RAF, it's been removed probably for security reasons. The big cars are cool, but I find it more interesting to see how they've set up the various vehicles in a collection to tell the story. So you can see how transport developed over the last 200 years. Anyway, I'll show you some of the things that I discovered, and if people want to add to this, they can certainly do so 
in the comments. This is a really old bike, but it has some interesting technology on it. The gas motor drives a rear hub at the back of the bike. There's also a standard bicycle drive. I'm not sure how fun or effective either of these would have been because, you know, this is coming from 100 years ago. There's also a very interesting design on the front suspension, and this was from an era when pretty much everything people tried was new. The best ideas stuck, and the rest get lost or sometimes recycled. This is the 1960s era light electric vehicle made by a guy in Coventry. It could do just over 30 miles an hour top speed and was actually fully registered for the road at those times. The steering on this thing actually looks pretty awful, but you can buy tricycles, motorcycles today with this wheel configuration. The idea was there. It just took the engineering time to catch up. When all this information was going on in Coventry, there were no standard patterns of chain or sprockets. So the chain on this one at least looks machined. This next one from the 1880s looks like it was potentially handmade on a forge. The rider actually using two chains, perhaps because he doesn't trust the strength of one. Here is the Singer Company with the world's first chopper back in 1886. And you can fast forward to see the more modern version of this design. Have a look at the design of this front suspension and you can see designers are still looking into ideas like this even now. Some of the suspension ideas were just plain strange, but they were just the result of practical people trying to innovate and solve problems with the materials and techniques that they had available. This bike was built in 1897 and it uses a shaft rather than a chain to connect the rear pedals. And it wasn't the only other bike here doing this. We know now that the derailleur caused the end of experiments here for quite a long time, but it is being looked at again now, especially that we have so many compact geared hubs. This thing almost seems like a joke, but they did actually build these bikes. What struck me the most was that up until 1930, there's this real blur between what it is to be a motorcycle and a bicycle. There were lots of vehicles like this one from 1920, small motor, bicycle drive, use either or both. Some of them were really creative in how they geared, but almost all of them had the motor on the rear wheel. This one here is the 1903 Singer motor wheel, first made in 1899. The two horsepower motor could be put through front or rear, but there was no, no mention of dual motor versions. If you check out the early belt on this one, it's absolutely massive and it's needed to move the power to the back. This is the first mid-mounted motor I saw in this style. Once you get past 1930, you start to see things like this, which have no bicycle pedals for input, but frame-wise is still very much a bicycle in terms of stature. This is probably my favorite integration in terms of style, but it's from 1930. From that point, the paths very much diverge into motorcycles and bicycles, at least for most of the manufacturers. I find it very interesting because much of what we do is to try and have more of a blend between bicycle and motorcycle again, albeit with electric motors and batteries. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you made it this far, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Feel free to leave comments. Cheers.